This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Brennan Holtzclaw, Moberly, Missouri. Aesop's Fables The Goat Herd and the Wild Goats. A goat herd was tending his goats out at pasture when he saw a number of wild goats approach and mingle with his flock. At the end of the day, he drove them home and put them all into the pen together. Next day, the weather was so bad that he could not take them out as usual, so he kept them at home in the pen and fed them there. He only gave his own goats enough food to keep them from starving, but he gave the wild goats as much as they could eat and more, for he was very anxious for them to stay, and he thought that if he fed them well, they wouldn't want to leave him. When the weather improved, he took them all out to pasture again, but no sooner had they got near the hills than the wild goats broke away from the flock and scampered off. The goatherd was very much disgusted at this and roundly abused them for their ingratitude. "'Rascals!' he cried, "'to run away like that after the way I treated you!' Hearing this, one of them turned around and said, "'Oh, yes, you treated us all right. Too well, in fact. It was just that that put us on our guard. If you treat newcomers like ourselves so much better than your own flock, it's more than likely that, if another lot of strange goats joined yours, we should then be neglected in favor of the last comers. End of The Goat Herd and the Wild Goats This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Gemma Blythe Aesop's Fables The Nightingale and the Swallow A swallow, conversing with a nightingale, advised her to quit the leafy coverts where she made her home, and to come and live with men, like herself, and nest under the shelter of their roofs. But the nightingale replied, Time was when I too, like yourself, lived among men. But the memory of the cruel wrongs I then suffered makes them hateful to me, and never again will I approach their dwellings. The scene of past sufferings revives painful memories. End of the Nightingale and the Swallow This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Gemma Blythe. Aesop's Fables. The Traveler and Fortune. A traveler, exhausted with fatigue after a long journey, sank down at the very brink of a deep well and presently fell asleep. He was within an ace of falling in when Dame Fortune appeared to him and touched him on the shoulder, cautioning him to move further away. "'Wake up, good sir, I pray you,' she said. "'Had you fallen into the well, "'the blame would have been thrown not on your own folly, "'but on me, Fortune.'" End of The Traveler and Fortune End of Aesop's Fables Volume 12 All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Alex Bowie, Woodbridge, Virginia. Aesop's Fables, Grief and His Due When Jupiter was assigning the various gods with their privileges, it so happened that grief was not present with the rest. But when all had received their share, he too entered and claimed his due. Jupiter was at a loss to know what to do, for there was nothing left for him. However, at last he decided that to him should belong the tears that are shed for the dead. Thus, it is the same with grief as it is with the other gods. The more devoutly men render to him his due, the more lavish he is of that which he has to bestow. It is not well, therefore, to mourn long for the departed, else grief whose sole pleasure is in such mourning, will be quick to send fresh cause for tears. End of Grief and His Due This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are public domain. 
For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Alex Bowie, Woodbridge, Virginia. Aesop's Fables The Hawk, the Kite, and the Pigeons. The pigeons and a certain dove goat were persecuted by a kite, who every now and then swooped down and carried off with one of their number. So they invited a hawk into the dovecote to defend them against their enemy. But they soon repented of their folly, for the hawk killed more of them in a day than the kite had done in a year. End of The Hawk, the Kite, and the Pigeons This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Alan Davis Drake in Long Branch, New Jersey, PaintedRiceCakes.org. Aesop's Fables, The Woman and the Farmer A woman who had lately lost her husband used to go every day to his grave and lament her loss. A farmer, who was engaged in plowing not far from the spot, set eyes upon the woman and desired to have her for his wife. So he left his plow and came and sat by her side and began to shed tears himself. She asked him why he wept, and he replied, I have lately lost my wife, who was very dear to me, and tears ease my grief. And I, she said, have lost my husband. And so for a while they mourned in silence. And then he said, Since you and I are in like case, shall we not do well to marry and live together? I shall take the place of your dead husband and you that of my dead wife. The woman consented to the plan, which indeed seemed reasonable enough, and they dried their tears. Meanwhile, a thief had come and stolen the oxen which the farmer had left with his plow. On discovering the theft, he beat his breast and loudly bewailed his loss. When the woman heard his cries, she came and said, Why are you weeping still? To which he replied, Yes, and I mean it this time. End of The Woman and the Farmer This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Alan Davis Drake in Long Branch, New Jersey, PaintedRiceCakes.org. Aesop's Fables, Prometheus and the Making of Man. At the bidding of Jupiter, Prometheus set about the creation of man and the other animals. Jupiter, seeing that mankind, the only rational creatures, were far outnumbered by the irrational beasts, bade him redress the balance by turning some of the latter into men. Prometheus did as he was bidden, and this is the reason why some people have the forms of men but the souls of beasts. End of Prometheus and the Making of Man This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Annie Coleman Aesop's Fables The Swallow and the crow. A swallow was once boasting to a crow about her birth. I was once a princess, said she, the daughter of a king of Athens, but my husband used me cruelly and cut out my tongue for a slight fault. Then, to protect me from further injury, I was turned by Juno into a bird. "'You chatter quite enough as it is,' said the crow. 
"'What you would have been like if you hadn't lost your tongue, I can't think.'" End of The Swallow and the Crow Recorded by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri, in July 2006 On the web at www.anniecoleman.com This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Brennan Holtzclaw of Moberly, Missouri. Aesop's Fables, The Hunter and the Horseman A hunter went out after game and succeeded in catching a hare, which he was carrying home with him when he met a man on horseback, who said to him, You have had some great sport, I see, sir, and offered to buy it. The hunter readily agreed, but the horseman had no sooner got the hare in his hands than he set spurs to his horse and went off at a full gallop. The hunter ran after him for some little distance, but it soon dawned upon him that he had been tricked, and he gave up trying to overtake the horseman, and, to save his face, called after him as loud as he could, "'All right, sir, all right, take your hare. It was meant all along as a present.'" End of The Hunter and the Horseman